G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. When I first reviewed the F-104S, I basically described it as not competitive at all, but a lot of fun. Kind of the same way that the D5 Stuka is a lot of fun, and not entirely competitive, although the D5 Stuka is a lot more competitive relative to its battle rating than the F-104S. But, ladies and gentlemen, the F-104S has gotten a couple of little changes. Of course, the battle ratings have changed around the F-104S, meaning that it does still see 9.3 planes, which in my opinion is absolutely hilarious, because you can see things like the CL-13, uh, and of course you can see things that are, you know, 9.3 American, F-86K, certain uh, Sabres, certain MiG-17F, oh, MiG or uh, Shenyang F-5, and of course you can see the 9.7s like the English Electric Lightning and the T2 no, T is 10.0, but that's beside the point. You can see a lot of uh, pretty low tier jets, but you know what, you don't really get that match too often. I did review a 10.3 uh, the other day, and I did get a couple of down tiers, and that was the uh, Mitsubishi F1. Uh, and of course the Mitsubishi F1 is quite enjoyable at that tier. And it's not too bad at that uh, top tier as well. Of course, you're not going to get the same performance as a 10.7 that's ultra competitive. And uh, the same goes really for the F-104S. It doesn't really fall into that category of competitiveness, mainly because it is a guided missile with guided missiles. The F-104S is very, very quick, but unfortunately it does not have any turning capabilities, which makes it limited in its dogfighting capabilities. Unfortunately for the F-104S, that is the main issue that limits it, forcing it to basically go around the map, doing the zoomies, and picking up enemies that are a little bit slow. That doesn't mean that you can't dogfight in this thing, or it doesn't mean that you can't turn a little bit, but you really should not be ever relying on that sort of uh, capabilities, because there's there's not a lot. There's not a lot of capability in the F-104S in terms of its 10.7 uh, worthiness. However, it does get two AIM-7Es, and they are, of course, being... Oh, they're, you're able to slave them to the radar, and you do get some RWR to boot. No flares, but you do get a whole lot of speed, which means that at lower altitudes, you can probably outrun some of these missiles if you're at your top speed, but uh, I wouldn't count on it. The F-104S, whilst being pretty fun, uh, is a bit of a struggle, and I would take a guess that until you get the uh, AIM-7s, it's not going to be very easy to fly. However... We are going to have a little bit of fun today, and that's kind of what the F-104S is. It's a little derpy plane, and you can just sort of muck around in it, not expect a lot. So here I go, warming up a, uh, a nice little 9B, straight for that MiG-21MF who does not suspect a thing, and gets clapped by an AIM-9B at battle rating 10.7, which makes it all the more hilarious and all the more satisfying when you do get a kill like that. My next target here is a MiG-21 that is up at altitude. Now I picked this particular MiG-21 because he... Uh, is a very good target for the AIM-7 Sparrow, but unfortunately he is going for like a head-on type thing, so I'm not going to take that. And instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the plane around, and it looks like he's going to engage with that FGR-2, who uh, promptly gets missile sniped by the uh, MiG-21 BIS. So, whilst I'm bleeding a little bit of speed, I'm going to basically just look for targets that are in front of me. Unfortunately, the F-104S isn't one of those planes where you can just sort of uh, dogfight away, like I said earlier, and uh, the MiG-21 here makes a perfect target out of himself. Beautiful, beautiful target, just for a... Uh, I said I said for, for an AIM-9B, he's probably rolled out of the way because the AIM-9B is tragic. It is, it is a really tragic missile, and like I said, you shouldn't be expecting to get kills with AIM-9Bs. If this thing had AIM-9Es, it would be like, nicer. Ideally, it should have AIM-9Gs for balancing reasons, but historically it didn't carry them at all. And in fact, uh, it didn't carry anything up to the AIM-9L. So you would literally have to give this thing AIM-9Ls to upgrade its missiles and retain the historical accuracy. Uh, and that I'm not really a fan of, unfortunately. I, I don't think that's a wise decision. Um, speaking of not a wise decision, a bit of an ambitious missile there on the MF. And uh, again, like I said, those AIM-9Bs are not going to treat you terribly well. So you kind of have to use the gun, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I pop off another set of uh, Brut, and of course I get myself a nice little kill. Here comes a MiG-21. That was the one from before that uh, I was going to engage at altitude. Unfortunately, the R-60 manages to uh, go, I guess, unspotted. 
which gives me a, a sort of second where I just can't see it and I can't dodge out of the way, unfortunately. Well, so that is one of the clips that I, I would like to show you where you sort of, it doesn't matter if someone wants you, you are basically fucked. There is not a lot that you can do if someone is on your six and they have a rock hard boner for you. So unfortunately, whilst you can like kind of end it like I'm doing here, <laughs> oh my god, War Thunder never ceases to amaze me. And then, uh, yeah. <laughs> Moving swiftly on, I'm going to show you another match that is a little bit on the uh, sad side there. Again, another ambitious missile. And uh, speaking of ambitious missile, that AIM-9P was looking very ambitious at me. But this is one of the things that you can kind of do for a little bit in the F-104S. And uh, I will remind you that if someone wants you, you are fucked. So you really can't be on the defensive. And you can see I'm basically dodging a few of these missiles here. I'm still maintaining like 1200 at sea level, which is fairly impressive. But there's an F-104 behind me. There is an F-1 a, uh, another F-104, and then a couple of F-4Es, and uh, it's it's only a matter of time before I get shot down here. There's absolutely nothing that I can do, because I don't have any teammates here to back me up, unlike, uh, I guess, yeah, the BKL is, is a teammate, but it doesn't have any missiles, doesn't really count, and the uh, BKL is more of a ground attacker anyway, although he does do a fair job to distract a couple of opponents here. Again, a uh, lovely little AIM-9J comes out. I'm going to roll a little bit to try and uh, sort of get rid of its lock. Uh, I can't really do a whole lot at this point. There's really just sort of sitting there trying my best and, and sitting in the corner and crying, unfortunately. The F-104S is not one of those planes that you can afford to be defensive on. You need to have someone there that is going to support you in that sort of situation, in that role. And uh, unfortunately, in that case, I didn't put myself in a place to get any help. Now, in this case here, we're going to go on to the Happy Time games. These are the games where it sort of work out um, and are a little bit sort of on the on the wacky side. Because the F-104S is one of those planes that is just odd. It's just really, really strange in the way it plays and the way you get kills. So, first kill here is going to be a, uh, believe it or not, a gun kill. Yeah, you don't see them too often in jets. Although, with the M61 Vulcan, you do have that opportunity to get a couple more gun kills. So, moving on swiftly, there are two MiG-21s here, and I'm going to put myself into a turn. You might have thought, well, you're a fucking idiot. What are you doing putting a putting an F-104 in a turn? Now, it does sound kind of uh, wacky when you think about it, but if you think about it a little bit more deeply, the MiG-21 has very poor energy retention in a turn. So if I can force them to do a 180 degree turn, they can bleed like 60% of their speed and I'll retain all of it and maybe gain a little bit more, put myself in a bit of a climb and I could even get away from my opponents just a little bit more. So it can work out, it just has to be executed appropriately. And of course, I wouldn't expect it all the time. What I don't expect all the time, like I said, is a gun kill. There's another one after another ambitious missile you can't be too ambitious with the 9Bs, of course. And here I go again, pulling a similar maneuver, trying to either force the MiG-21 to continue straight, or of course to uh, get him to turn, bleed all his speed, and by that time, I'm well out of the range of the uh, R60s. I will say though that R60s are fairly formidable to uh, this particular plane, especially if they are within about two and a half kilometers and you're not at your full speed. The R60s are very, very potent missiles, of course. That being said, you can deal with them if they're, if they're basically at sea level and if you're traveling fast enough. And of course, you need to have some teammates on hand. I know War Thunder is it's supposed to be a team-based uh, game, and of course, your teammates often uh, don't communicate properly or don't communicate at all. But that's just some of the things that you're going to have to try and work around. Maybe try and baiting and trying to sort of uh, passively work with your team. Maybe if, they, if you see someone struggling, go and help them, and maybe they'll go and help you. You never know what could happen. It's always worth a try, and with War Thunder, you never know. It could be anything. You could get Gaijin, or you could just get some of that uh, beautiful, beautiful luck. So, speaking of beautiful luck, the T2 here has been chasing the MiG-21, and of course, I am both faster and low on fuel. 
So that makes me basically pull out my afterburner. No more afterburning for me until I can, you know, make sure that I get this kill. So that is another consideration that you have to have in the F104S. Your fuel consumption is fairly high. So I would personally recommend taking the full fuel load just because I have had more occasions than not where I run out of fuel. This is a classic one and I think recently a lot of jets just seem to be running out of fuel a lot more. Sending out there an AIM-9B, this is going to be a little bit of an ambitious one uh, and unfortunately I don't get anything so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send an AIM-7 and of course because the MiG-21 SMT has uh, crashed leaving this guy the only enemy on the uh, enemy team I'm just going to send all my missiles. There's most of the time I would discourage sending your missiles like this so often but if there's only one guy left and you're low on fuel and everyone's behind him you might as well and that's kind of what I'm gonna do here so I'm gonna prep myself an aim 7e and this one for some reason tracks quite nicely and gets myself a beautiful little kill I guess he's just like well fuck it I give up or maybe I ran him out of fuel maybe I, I don't know it doesn't seem to really matter at the end of the day, walking away with three kills is a real big victory in the F-104S. I honestly haven't been able to get any more than three. It's, I've played the plane fairly, well, somewhat extensively. And it's it, it's not one of those planes you get a lot of kills in. Maybe you'll get one kill a match. Uh, and honestly, I would, like I said, take every little victory as something beautiful and uh, something to sort of behold. Because in the F-104S, you really don't have a lot of stopping power. You do have your M61, you do have the two M7s, but if you combine it with the more potent sort of dogfighting sidewinders, you really don't have that much because you only have the 9Bs, like I said. What I would recommend in the future for this plane is I actually don't know. I suspect that this plane will have lackluster performance compared to future generations. Uh, so, for example, the F14 or a more powerful. F4 Phantom or a MiG-23 or anything like that basically so I don't really know if giving it aim 9 ls and then eventually 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 when the F14 and the MiG-29 and the MiG-25 come out I think it would be a better op option just to leave it uncompetitive and then add the F104 AS or the F104 S SA or whatever it's called Basically, the one of the, uh, or the version of the F-104S that could carry the uh, Aspida. As Aspida? Aspid? It's basically an improved side one, uh, improved Sparrow missile. So you could basically just throw in that one and give that one AIM-9Ls, give that one flares, give that one the Aspida missile, and, you know, maybe the Mark One, maybe the Mark II as well could go well for the uh, F-104S. But for now, honestly, we have a lot to sort of enjoy here. Of course, like I said, not competitive, but still a lot of fun. And the F-104S is one of those planes that you, like I said, you don't take too seriously. And I guess that goes for a lot of things. If you if you take it too seriously, you'll find that your expectations are a little bit uh, too high and you don't get what you want, which is, uh, you know, always disappointing. Speaking of getting what I want, uh, I kind of wanted that uh, little kill there. And I also wanted that kill and got a little bit disappointed. But you know what, that's okay because we're in an F-104S, we've gotten a couple of kills and our team is right here to back us up. So if there's anything that we need to do, anything that sort of we need to uh, get done in this particular match, uh, we have it fairly easy. MiG-21 SMT goes for a quick head-on and of course I am uh, going for a little one but of course I'm going to pull off in time so that I don't get swept up by GSH-23s which I've personally found to be more and more painful to aim, but that's just me. I'm probably just getting missile brain where all I'm used to is just oh, click, point, missile, click, get kill, and then not learning how to aim or forgetting my muscle memory. Anyway, the uh, next sort of victim here is this F-104 sitting in front of me. Now, I am the fastest plane in the game at the moment at sea level, so it's, uh, it's not really a hard hard time catching this guy. It's it's only a matter of time and this F-104, like all the other F-104s, are basically just a lawn dart with guided missiles. 
there's not a whole lot he can do and it really is only a matter of time before he either gets aim 9 jade aim 7 e aim 9 bead aim 9 e aim 9 g it doesn't matter because he's basically fucked he he'll, could even get 20 mil by an f100 which would be really sad anyway this poor f104 is basically struggling and for me it's just a matter of can i get a missile on target and uh you know it isn't as easy as you think obviously with the aim 7 sparrow you don't have that opportunity for low altitude radar stuff because we don't have look down shoot down radar in war thunder at the moment but of course i have myself a little aim 9b prepped and it seems like the f104 has uh, kind of blacked out so maybe he's blacked out or maybe he's just bled all his speed but you know what free kill is a free kill and i'm not going to complain overall the f104s is still a lot of fun and like I said, you should not be taking it too seriously, otherwise you'll you will have severely limited ex expectations, and you'll just be really disappointed. What I would personally recommend is that you take the F-104S with a grain of salt, have a laugh, maybe grab some friends, and just sort of enjoy the memes. That will do it for today's video, the F-104S. I had to review it, you know, it's just one of those planes that are just so memey and so interesting. But uh, likewise, I'd like to thank you guys for uh, all the support on the channel. It's I'm genuinely lost for words. I know you're probably sick of hearing it. Every video, I'm basically saying, holy shit, this channel is going off. And uh, I, I don't know what else to say. It's just been fantastic. So thank you so much for, for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Take care. And I'll catch you next time. F104S, best yet.